Oftentimes, when you start to edit a design, you'll need to select elements, scale them, rotate them, maybe rotate the whole design, maybe scale the whole design, maybe even slant them. Let's look at how to do that. So I have opened this BlueJ design that's loaded with your software. And the first thing that we'll want to do is we'll want to select something. So to select it, I can simply click on it in the view window and it will be selected. Now, notice when I selected it that I got the resize edit box up around it. So that's that black box with the black squares in the corners and on the sides and top and bottom. The rest of the design also kind of fell back and became a little less bright, a little less bold. If I want to select multiple items, I can hold control and click on more elements and they will come in. And the resize edit box will expand to contain them. And then they will, as they join the selection, will become more bold. Other ways to select more, and I just deselected. To deselect, just click outside of the resize edit box. If I want to select more elements, I can click and drag a box, and anything that's contained within this box when I let go will be selected. Now, in order to be selected, the whole element has to fall within that box. So here you can see I got most of the body, I got all of one of the wings, and a little bit of another, and a little bit of his tail. So I can select multiple by clicking and dragging a box. I can select multiple by holding control and clicking on just the elements that I want in the view window. To deselect, I can click out of this box. Now, if you are really zoomed in, so I'm gonna zoom in real quick. I'm really, really zoomed in here. I don't have anywhere outside of the box to click on to deselect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to edit and deselect all. Also, you can see I have some keyboard shortcuts set up that I set up via the accelerator editor. You can just tap D to make that happen, or I can tap tab on my keyboard. So if I can't, if I can't get to where I can click outside of the box, I can use those keyboard shortcuts to deselect what I have. All right, so let's fit window again. So we're looking at the whole design. If I want to select things in the project view, so when I select them in the view window, they are also selected in the project view. But if I want to select in the project view, I can just scroll. If I know what I want to select, I can just select the elements here. If I want to select multiple elements, I can hold control and I can select non-consecutive elements. And if I didn't really want element 62, I can click on it again to deselect it. If I want to select multiple consecutive elements, I can click on one, hold shift, click on the other, and now I've just selected all of these. And the nice thing about selecting in the project view is I can select at a level. So if I want to deal with just these wireframe elements, I can select at this level. If I wanted to select a whole color, I can select at the color level. And now I have all of this gray or now I have all of the white. I can also just select at the design level. If I had multiple designs and I wanted to select them all, I could even select at the project level. So you've got lots of options for how to select. Another nice feature is if I want to select all the complex fills or all the walk stitches in my design, I can select one walk stitch, I can right click on it, and I can say select. I can say same type. And now I just selected all of the walk stitches in my design. Here's one for you. How do I select under something? So I have a design, I have elements, and I want to select the travel stitch underneath, or I click on something and I get the outline and I, I wanted the fill underneath of it. How do I get to it? There's a couple tricks for that. Okay, so if I click here and I get the outline, well, I really wanted the fill underneath. This one, yeah, I could be 
clever enough to move down and grab this. But there are areas where things just get a little bit tight, and that's really not what I wanted. I wanted the, the I wanted underneath of it. That's where these come in. So you've got previous element, so I can click on that, and it will go down through the layers until I get to the piece that I wanted. I can come back up through the layers as well. And that's going to depend a little bit on your zoom level. If I'm zoomed in really tightly, I can see I've got this blue overlapping this blue, and I've got this outline. So if I click that, I've got here, I've got it selected. I go down through one, there's travel, there's a piece of blue, there's a piece of blue. If I click again, I can't go any farther. So it depends on where you click and the accuracy of that is going to be a little bit based on your zoom level, right? Like if I'm out here and I'm clicking around, I'm more likely to grab a few things than if I'm more tightly zoomed in. Other things that you could do to make your life a little bit easier. Uh, if I don't want to deal with any of these outlines, I can either hide them. And if it's hidden, I can't select it. So by clicking on the eyeball, in the project view, I can hide that whole color. Or if I want to see it, but I don't want to select it, I can lock it. And then I can select right through to the blue underneath. So the visibility here, the locking, those can allow you to click through an element. And then if you click it and you do select it, but you want down below it, you have these two items here, select below and select next. I guess it's select previous and select next. Make sure I'm saying that right. Select previous and select next. So you have ways to navigate down through your list and through what you want. Just a couple of quick ways to control what you're actually selecting. All right, so now I wanna select everything. Well, I'm gonna use a keyboard shortcut for that. I'm going to select or uh, use control A to just select all. And now let's look at how to scale the design. So I can scale it graphically. I can grab this corner and I can scale it any which way I want. And the software is not going to limit me. So I can scale to something like this. And I'm pretty sure that's not going to sew. So I'm going to use keyboard shortcut again, and I'm going to control Z to undo. All right. So let's do that again. Control A to select all. I've got my resize edit box up. I can grab this corner and I can, any corner would do this. I can scale any which way I want. If I want it to be proportional, I hold shift and it sticks to proportional. When I let go, it will scale to that. So now the whole thing is bigger. Well, how big is it? I can double check down here at the size. I can also see that my stitch count is changing as I scale my design. So let me grab this corner and I'll scale it down. I'm gonna hold shift to be proportional. If you watch that status bar on the bottom, you can now see that I'm scaling 76, 80% right now. I let go and it's scaled to that. You can see the size has changed. You can see the stitch count has changed. Right, so I'm going to undo twice to get back to what this was. So now we're back to the original size, the original size being about 2.3 by 2.5. We can also scale from the center out. So if I'm taking one of these, if I hold Alt, it will scale from the center out. So if I want to scale from the center out, I hold Alt. If I want to scale proportional, I hold Shift. And if I want to do both, I hold both. So I'm holding Alt and Shift right now, and it is scaling proportionally. If I grab the side, I can scale just the width. And again, uh, Alt will scale from the center out that way. Now, Shift is kind of fun because Shift will still scale both because it keeps it proportional. So the sides, you can scale just the width as long as you're not holding shift because that will keep it proportional. The top and bottom, you can scale just the height. I can also scale it by the numbers. So if I know that I want this to be exactly two inches tall, 
I can come down here in the height box and I can type two. And as long as this lock aspect ratio is pressed, I can hit enter and it will scale everything proportionally. Now, if it was unchecked, it would scale just the height and leave the width whatever it had been. I can also, if I click on the H or the W, I can scale by a percentage. So if I wanted it to be 120% bigger than it was, if this is locked, it will do both automatically. I hit enter and it will scale to 120% of the size that it was. And then it of course resets because now we're at the new size. Other ways to get to those numbers, I can right click and I can go to scale. And that brings up the scale tab. And so I can scale to a specific number. I can scale to a percentage. As long as it's checked proportional, that's the same thing as this or the lock. So I can scale it that way. I could also right click and go to properties. And then I could go into this scale. And you see those same numbers, those same check boxes here. Lots of different ways to get to that. So what's a good idea for scaling? There's lots of guidelines in the industry. Don't scale a design more than 10 or 20%. Stay within this range. Okay, that's true for some things. So for expanded designs that are just expanded stitches, I understand those guidelines a little bit more. So I am historically taking expanded points. So all those stitches are just plotted out. And as I get bigger, those stitches just get farther apart. So that's gonna look really gappy. As I scale down, they get closer together. So that gets tight and ripply and not so good. Now, by default, we are using expanded stitch processing. So if you happen to have one of those expanded designs that are not wireframe, so they just say expanded over in the project view, they're just plotted out stitches. As you scale it up, Design Shop looks at that design and goes, okay, I, 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 think I, I think I see what you're doing here that's a fill that's a walk i can it's about a density of 3.8 i i think i know what you're doing and as you scale it up it will kind of convert it over scale it up look at that density fill in the stitches for you or if you're scaling down <laughs> take stitches out and uh it will kind of maintain that that stitch density so those guidelines apply a little less from the moving stitches farther apart and, and closer together aspect. Now, the trick is if I'm dealing with stitch width, so I'm dealing with satin stitch, that nice, shiny, smooth, in this case, the, the, the edge of uh, this bird's wings, the outlines, those are nice, smooth satin stitches. Well, as I, as I scale them down, that satin stitch just gets narrower and narrower and narrower to the point where I may be trying to sew a stitch that is smaller than the diameter of my needle. Well, that's not gonna end well for me. That's probably gonna end up in several thread breaks and a frustrated embroiderer. So that's where those guidelines start to come in. So typically uh, expanded, I like to stay, yeah, 10-ish percent one way or the other. Up is easier than down. I can scale up farther than I can scale down. Uh, wireframe, because it's got that those edges and it knows what's in it, um, the, the stitch information, the density, all of that is available and it can regenerate those stitches very easily, that you have a little bit more flexibility on. But typically, I would not try to take a jacket back design and shrink it down onto a cap because it's just going to end up being way too small, give me lots of thread breaks, and it's just not worth it. Typically, those need to be digitized separately. Um, but with wireframe, you've got a little bit more flexibility. Um, simpler designs tend to go far better than more complex designs. So those are those are kind of your guidelines, right? Do I break those guidelines? Yeah, absolutely. It's worth a try every now and then. So give it a shot. Um, but if you start seeing some of those thread break problems or you get really long stitches, or your stitches went from a satin to a fill all of a sudden, it could be because you're scaling that design a little bit more than perhaps that design is able to be scaled. So we've scaled this design quite a bit. We've done it by the numbers, we've done it graphically. Let's, um, let's rotate the design now. So I'm going to select 
this design by control A again, just select all. And I've got this resize edit box up around it. But if I click inside of here, it turns into a rotate box. So my handles all hollow out. And if I hover over one, my cursor changes. So now I'm looking at my rotate. And if I click and drag, you'll see on the status bar down below, it shows an angle. And now I am rotated 44, 45 degrees. So I can let go. And now my design's been rotated 45 degrees. So let me undo that. So graphically, as long as these are hollowed out, if I click in it again, it will go back to resize edit. Click in it again, it goes to rotate. If I want another way to do that, I can right click on it and choose resize edit or right click on it and choose rotate. If I've had too many cups of coffee and I'm a little jittery on the mouse, I may choose to do that this way instead of just accidentally double clicking every time and getting back into properties. All right, so I can rotate the design this way. If I go over the side, I can skew my design. If I go over the top or bottom, I can slant my design. And the software is not going to limit me. So if I get a lot of stitch distortion where my satin stitches are starting to uh, some of these are starting to get a little weird in here, but um, if I take it really far, they'll get really weird and start bunching up and giving me some problems when I sew it out. Undo twice to get back to something a little bit norm more normal. So corners rotate, sides skew, bottom and top slant. Also, it's a little bit hard to see right now. But when I'm in rotate mode, I've got a little circle with an X in it right here. And if I hover over it, you can see my cursor changes. This is the pivot point. I can click and drag this anywhere inside or out of that box. And then if I go to rotate, that's the point around which my design will rotate. So I can change the pivot point of my design. hit undo and go back. That's a really handy uh, device for if I was doing petals on a flower and I wanted to do one and duplicate it and rotate it around the center of the flower rather than the center of the individual petal, I might move that pivot point and do something like that. Okay, we've rotated it graphically. Let's do it by the numbers. So I can click on the W or the H down here and I can rotate this way. 45 degrees, hit enter to have it rotate. Now, since I didn't have anything selected, it rotated the whole design. Same thing with scale. If I have nothing selected, it will do the entire project. Let's select all, right click, and let's go to scale. And then I'm gonna go to the position tab, and here's rotate this way. So let's go negative 45 and let's put it back. There we go. We could also rotate it with the orientation button here. And every time I click, it'll change. So you can see in 90 degree increments, including mirroring. So if I click it four times, it'll just mirror. I hit apply. And now he's facing the other direction. Now, if I want to get him back, there's an easier way. I've got mirror buttons down here. In fact, I've got rotate 90 degree buttons down here. So if you want something just really quick, turn them upside down, you can click on either of these twice and it'll be 180 degrees, it's upside down. You've got some really quick tools to rotate your design, slant it, skew it, scale it, get it where you need it to be.